Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. In the first part of this video, we looked at loading the 1.40 firmware update, and we took a look at the enhancements that it made to the spectrum scope on the radio. This time, we'll take a look at the rest of the features in there. Let's get started. Alright, we'll turn the squelch up so... We don't listen to the audio, but we can still hear the beeps. Let's take a look at the preset function. This was probably the most touted piece in the ICOM announcement about the new firmware update. And the, the announcement talked about the preset function making it much easier to work FT8. And I suppose it does that, but it actually does quite a bit more. Let's look at how we get into it. So we're going to press menu, and in order to implement this new feature, they've added a second page to the menu, because the first page is full. So if we go to the second page, the only item on it is this preset function and the set function, which is the settings is on both pages. And the little icon for it says FT8, so they've kind of highlighted that mode. But if we go into preset, we'll see that there are a total of five presets. There's four on the first page, and we've got one here on the second page. Three, four, and five are blank. And the way the firmware update comes, uh, items or preset numbers one and two are pre-filled. Number one is called normal. Number two is FT8. And you can change one and two if you want. You can change them to anything you like, but they're preloaded as normal and FT8. So let's look at how this works. If I press normal, it says, do you want to load the preset into memory? Now, for the moment, I'm going to say no, because if you've loaded it, it won't let you edit it. If I press and hold the setting, now I get a little quick menu that says edit the preset, save the preset to memory, or go to the default settings for that preset. So default will put it back to the way it came from the firmware, uh, with the firmware update. So you can change anything you want, and if you want to get it back to the normal and FT8 that it came with, you can just set it to default. So let's edit it. And when we edit it, we'll see we have the name. Of course, you can make that whatever you like. And then as you scroll down, you'll see a lot of different menu settings for the radio. Some of them are front panel settings. Uh, some of them are settings that you have to go into the set menu to change. But there's basically seven pages worth of stuff, because page eight here is just the, the button to write it to memory once you've made changes. So let's look at how this works. Mode is what you would expect. It's all of the modes, single sideband, lower sideband, data, basically every mode that you can set the radio into is available in the selections. Now you'll notice there's single sideband, whoops, and there's lower sideband, lower sideband data, and upper sideband, and upper sideband data. If we choose single sideband, what that'll do is it will preset the radio, regardless of what mode you're in, when you load this preset, it will put the radio on single sideband, and it'll put it on the sideband that's appropriate for whatever frequency you're on. So if I'm on 40 and 80 meters, it'll set the radio to lower sideband. If I'm on 20 meters and up, it'll set the radio to upper sideband. And then you'll see there's a little checkbox next to each of these. The little checkbox determines whether that setting will be loaded with this preset or not. So for example, if I uncheck mode and notice all the filter choices go away, if I don't touch the mode it won't let me change the filters. So if this is unchecked and I load this preset, it will set all these other settings that are set but it won't touch the mode. It'll leave the mode at whatever the radio is set for. And likewise with filter, if filter's checked, I can pick, do I want filter 1, 2, or 3? And I can pick the bandwidth for that filter. So the default is 2.4 kilohertz for filter 2, but I can actually make it narrower, 
or wider if I have some different preference. And I can check the filter type, soft or sharp. Curiously, they have filter type for HF and filter type for 50 megahertz or 6 meters. I'm not sure why they made those two separate choices, but they did. So, and if I turn off the checkbox for filter, then the, fil the checkboxes for the filter other selections goes away as well. And actually, I'm going to check this live. If I, I think, if I put the mode, at, let's put it to like FM where the filters, yeah, the filters, so filter bandwidth, I can still pick filter 1, 2, and 3, but the filter bandwidth and the other types are automatically, whoops, I don't want to cancel the edit, are automatically unchecked because they don't make any sense if I'm picking the mode to be FM. So let's go back to what it defaulted to here. And let's look down a little further. So the accessory jack and USB output, USB output select, I can make audio frequency or IF. We haven't done anything about using that for IF. We'll talk about that here in some future video. I can set the audio frequency output level. So again, if I was using this with a particular computer setup or a particular um, accessory jack interface setup, I can set the output level and then have that be controlled by this preset. Um, same with USB modulation level. So for modulation coming in through the USB port, I can adjust what that level is. Uh, I can turn the squelch on and off going out of the jack or, you know, have it open or have it follow the squelch knob. Data modulation, where does it get the modulation from if I'm in data mode, the accessory jack, and so on. I'm not going to go through all the details of each of these settings, but you can see all of the settings here. So whatever I have checked, it's going to load that setting into the radio. So when I say load this preset into memory, it's now, it tells me that that one's in use and it's loaded and it will have set the radio to all of those settings. Now, frankly, the normal ones kind of set what they're normally set to, so you probably wouldn't notice much difference here. So let's unload that. Let's take a look at the FT8 preset and see what they've done. And I've just loaded that. Now, and actually, let's go back and look. So you'll notice... I was on 80 meters and this was lower sideband. It's now upper sideband data. So let's go back in and we'll unload that one and then we can press and hold it so we can edit it. And you'll see the preset FT8. So the mode, it sets it to upper sideband data because that's what FT8 uses no matter what frequency you're on. The, the convention for FT8 is upper sideband data. It sets the filter to filter 1. It sets it to 3.6 kilohertz, which is as wide as it goes, which is what they recommend in the WSJT manual. Sets the filter type to soft. Output select to audio frequency. Now, they just have it set to 50%. You might tweak this depending on what your computer settings are. The squelch is open, so it just leaves the squelch open all the time. Now, notice they don't set the accessory USB IF output level. Well, that's because we are putting out uh, audio frequency, not intermediate frequency, so they don't bother to change this. The modulation level from USB is set to 50%. Data modulation, they have it coming from the USB jack. That's because most people using WSJT are going to be using their computer through the USB port. SSB data transmit bandwidth. It's got that set from 100 to 2900, which is as wide as it goes. And again, that's what's recommended in the manual for WSJT. Data off modulation. It's not checked, so it's not going to set the data off modulation because this preset is putting the radio in data mode. It doesn't have the compressor setting checked because that doesn't make sense in data mode the non-data transmit bandwidth it's not ch changing and then you can see a whole bunch more settings here that it's not changing it sets the CIV address to 94 hex 
that's the default for the 7300 so they're making sure that's right and then they have all the serial port baud rate functions set to make sure they're correct so that's the settings for ft8 now let's do a quick example here let's say for example you used your radio with a mixer at home in your home shack and you had a instead of using the icon microphone you've got a mixer plugged into the accessory jack and you have it coming in through the back so you want to have your audio come in only through the accessory jack so let's do the settings for this one we're not going to change the mode um, we're not going to change the well let's say accessory output we want to make sure is audio frequency and we want to uh, we'll leave the squelch setting actually so that it's on. So if I turn the squelch on, I don't hear it over my mixer. And then I'm not going to bother with the USB modulation level or data modulation level because I'm not using that. Data off modulation, so this is through when I'm using regular voice mode, not data mode. And it's got mic and accessory. Well, I want to change that so that it's only coming in through the accessory jack and I don't use the front mic jack at all. And maybe I want to have my compressor, whoops, let's turn that on, set to on. And for that, we'll leave everything else alone. So let's go all the way back to the top. And we will call this preset um, mixer. So now, if I go back, whoops, no, I don't want to cancel it. Let's go down and write that. Yes, I want to write it. So now I have preset 3 set to mixer. And if I load that into memory, then now you notice compression is on. And if I go into the settings and I go to connectors, data modulation is USB, but that's where I had that set. Data off modulation is accessory. So it's not going to get audio from the mic. It's going to get it from the accessory jack in the back. So, and again, you can use this for whatever kind of settings you want. This is... Um, a lot of personal preference and how you happen to have your particular shack set up. Now if I unload that it's going to go back to what the settings were so if I well here let's go look uh, maybe it made a liar out of me it left the compressor on let's see if it left the connectors where they were um, Nope, it put the connectors back to where they were, mic and accessory for data off. So I may have had the compressor on before, I don't recall. So that may have gone back. But it, if you unload it from memory, it should put all the settings back to what they were before you loaded the preset. So that's the preset function in a nutshell. As I said, I think it's very handy if you use your radio in different modes, different locations, you know, for different operations, this can make your life a lot easier so you don't have to remember to go through and set a bunch of things manually each time. Way back in videos one and two, I talked about some bonus memories that you have for each band, and that's the band stacking registers. So for every band on the radio, there's actually three registers that are kind of like memories and if you touch the megahertz button to change bands if I go to the same band I'm already on it goes to a different register so I was at 7220 lower sideband data now I'm on 7060 lower sideband if I go to the same band again now I'm on 7020 and CW and then again, if I do it a third time, I'm back to the original frequency and mode. So those are your three band stacking registers. 
but there was no way to tell which one you were on or what they were set to. You had to just scroll through them. With this firmware update, they've made a nice little user interface improvement to that. If I touch and hold the megahertz now, it shows me my three registers and what's in them. So here's my three frequencies and modes that are remembered, and then you can just touch the one you want to go to. So again, no changes to the memories themselves. They've just made the display a little better. You can also go to the band screen and touch and hold either the same band or a different one. If I touch and hold the band I want to go to, it'll show me the three registers for that band, and then I can just touch it and it'll go to that one. So nice little user interface improvement for the band stacking registers. Another nice enhancement in this update is they have made four of the buttons, four of the physical buttons on the front panel assignable. So you've got the Vox break-in button, you've got the auto-tune button, and then you've got the down and up buttons that were normally used for changing memory channels. All of those can be assigned uh, a number of different functions now. So to get to that, we're going to press the menu button. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether you're on page or one or two. The set function is always in the lower right corner. So we're going to go to set function and we're going to scroll down here I think to page 7 front key whoops sorry front key customize and if you press that here's the four buttons so we've got the vox break in auto tune up and down arrow and the default of course is they are assigned to the function that is named on it and then you can change them to a number of optional functions so auto tune is to tune a CW signal to the right tone let's say I don't work CW at all or I work it very seldom so I want to assign the auto tune button to something a little bit more useful to me so you can sign you can assign any of these to preset and the four memory keyer functions, voice, CW, or RIDI memories. So let's say that preset function that we reviewed, I really like that, and I want to use a number of different presets. I can sign, assign the auto-tune button to the preset function. So now, if we get all the way back out of here, now if I press auto-tune, it takes me to the preset menu directly. So I can use auto-tune and then say, okay, I want to load whatever preset it is I want to use. So that's a really nice feature. And you can use it for those keyer memories. For example, maybe you might want to assign the down button to keyer memory one and the up button to keyer memory two. And then if you're using it for contesting or whatever and you have your CQ stored in memory one, you just have to press this button. You don't have to bring up the, whoops, that's the wrong memory uh, display, sorry. You don't have to bring up the voice or the CW keyer memories in order to access that. You can just press this button and it will automatically start transmitting what you have in memory one. So the assignable keys is kind of a nice function if you don't use those keys very often for their predefined function. Well, here we are almost 20 minutes in and there's still more features to cover. I guess this series is going to end up as three parts in total. I'm pretty sure we'll finish things up in the next one. As with this one, I'll do my best to get the final installment out in short order. The description has links for the firmware and the supplemental manual download, just like the first video. I've also included a link to the first video in this series. Please check out the link for a to z.tech. That's the companion website for this channel. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing. 
Please also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. I'm always happy to see your comments with questions, suggestions, corrections, or any other thoughts you might have. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.